happened. But right now to return, and we sort of had this theme last week in our discussion with Chris Gollins uh, from Wairarapa Commercial Real Estate Agent about the wisdom or otherwise, indeed otherwise, of the new speed limit restrictions, which seem to me to be inconsistent, inconsistently applied, and not always making common sense, particularly, for example, in the stretch of road that Chris was talking about in the Wairarapa, um, over the ranges from Wellington to the east of where I am now, and long, straight, straight stretches of road from Featherston up to Masterton, redesignated at 80 k's when really uh, some of the safest roads that we've seen with no bends in them. Um, and because I've kind of got... Dri- and I do a lot of driving, and I've got driving on my head, and I think a lot of you are thinking about our roads... I was interested to read an article in Auto Car magazine um, from one of our, our better drivers, a guy called Greg Murphy, who has come up and I think highlighted, uh, when once I thought about this article, a really simple way to make our roads a, a, a bit safer without spending a whole lot of money. And uh, Greg Murphy joins us on the line now. Greg, uh, welcome to you. Where are you calling us from, Greg? Are you stuck in the weather or not? Oh, okay, Sean. Uh not quite, although it's not that great. I'm in Taupo, actually, at the moment. So yeah. it's, uh, it's a little breezy, but um, certainly not copping it yet All like right. um, other poor people around the country. All right. Well, Waikata Kota, he tells us, that the road to zero is paved with 50 or 40 or 30 k speed limits. And that's how we stop having accidents and dying on our roads. I just love your piece, though. It's much simpler. Can you explain to us... Uh, how you think they might be able to reduce accidents without spending a lot of money? Well, I've got a list of things <laughs> that um, they're not uh, they're not particularly doing well. And you know, I don't know if you saw before just before Christmas, they actually came out with an article uh, hidden amongst the Christmas festive season, saying that they uh, have looked at it and, and um, Road to Zero is not working uh, in the way they're. They're applying it um, across the board, and um, uh, they had a list of excuses as to why, of course. But uh, the article that you're talking about um, that came up in the Auto Code just the other day was in relation to our road markings. And I have been driving around this country for years and years and years, but it's become quite obsessive of uh, this particular article of late. Um, everywhere I go, I'm analysing the road markings based on what I was told they have designed the system on and unfortunately the system has not actually been rolled out in the way that they have said in many many examples all over the country and it's quite inconsistent um, and it's out of date and not fit for purpose anymore as far as I'm concerned and so I think it needs uh, a complete relook I think the philosophy needs to, uh, to be adjusted and the road marking um, then redone accordingly and of course road marking is constantly maintained and, and these sections of road that uh, see remarking. So you can change oh. this it's not like you're hiring a whole bunch of new people if you want to change it no. you just apply different rules. Now you're talking particularly Greg aren't you about double yellow lines which to anyone who's driven for any length of time I see a double yellow line you do not cross it you do not pass another vehicle if you've got a double yellow line uh, to your right that's it's kind that's of hard right. baked right. into us isn't it? Well, it should be. I mean, it is, I think, to any sort of person, and this is interesting, the couple of words, and you mentioned it, it's common sense. So, um, you know, the, the basically the rule of thumb for the road marking is that there's yellow, a yellow line is put on the road where there is a blind crest that you can't see over when you are approaching. Mm-hmm. And and then the, I was asked, well, what about blind corners? And it was uh, told me that... Um, on a blind corner, if it's a white dotted line around the blind corner you can't see through, then common sense applies. Uh. Now, last time I checked, um, well, any time I drive anywhere in New Zealand and I see people driving, um, uh, there's not a lot of common sense being applied in many cases, but also the fact that we still, we're still we driving with mobile phones in our hands, the fact that we still drive drunk on drugs, um, without licences, with bad cars that don't have warrants, We don't have a lot of common sense when it comes to driving in New Zealand, so I don't see how uh, a common sense approach is going to apply to road marking. So I certainly believe that if we did change the the application of the philosophy of our road marking to have, you know, in more areas, more yellow... Double uh, yellow on blind corners? 
or corners oh, without yep. vision. Yep. That's right. Um, and and there's, there's significant other areas as well. But um, but I just thought, I just think that that's the case. And I think there's areas of, of road, uh, for example, I know on State Highway 5, which has been also reduced to 80 k's, where there's perfectly good roads in most, most parts of that. There's sections where there is absolutely no way you can pass because there's not enough room through a whole lot of windy section. And I don't understand so why. So you might as well just double the yellow line up, right? There you go. Exactly right. Yeah. Hey, Greg, you mentioned the ADKs and all these new... And I've got to say, I did a lot of driving. Uh, I was on the road yeah. for two weeks. East Cape, Northland, Taupo, Tudangi. Um, yep. And, boy, trying to keep up with what speed I was meant to be doing legally. Yeah. And I don't I don't <laughs> drive up to the limit of speed. I drive at what I'm comfortable of. And I'll be honest, as sure. I get older, that's dropped by a few Ks because I'm not as, yeah. as sharp and as fast as I was, uh, you know, 10, 15 years ago. But it's very confusing, and I don't know that I felt a hell of a lot safer at You're those lower speeds. To. You're not going to, too, and also lots of wire barriers being put up in, on, on, in roads, which there's, if you take uh, the thought process and, and when you arrive at a passing lane, right? So when you see a passing lane um, and, you, and you're, you've got, you're behind someone doing 85 kilometres an hour, it's a 100k zone, you yeah. get to the passing lane, how often does that person speed up to, you know, oh, to yeah. faster? Or right? the person but, who goes to overtake them at only three kilometres faster than they're yeah, going, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> so that 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 is all a, um, a subliminal awareness of of um, space space as well. So a spatial awareness, right? Is so what happens? The road gets wider. People feel more comfortable, so they go faster. So in, in many cases, we've had these wide barriers put up in the middle of the road without the road actually being widened. Um, a, yeah. lot, a lot on State Highway 1, these areas. And so people don't feel comfortable because there's not a lot of room, and so they do slow down and, um, and because they feel that the, the the, yeah. the space has been restricted, and um, that that's having an effect. But and it's been put into effect on roads that are perfectly, as you said, straight. Um, and really, if people are driving with concentration on driving and not distracted, and their eyes on the road, then it shouldn't be a problem. But unfortunately, with distraction and fatigue and a whole lot of other things that are happening these days, drivers are you know all over the place. And Waka Katahi have gone, oh, well, we're going to fix this by reducing the speeds, doing all these things, and and we'll, what will happen is people will still crash, but they'll be going slower, so they won't be killed. They might be injured badly, who knows, they might still be killed, but they're taking the punt that by doing this, we're going to save lives. And it's so far proven to be completely incorrect, and it is going to continue to have crashes and people getting hurt and potentially killed regardless of the speed. So we're not doing a better job in our driving. Their idea is an ambulance at the bottom of the cliff approach, which also is not going to work and it's yeah. proving not to work. Yeah. Hey, Greg, I just got a uh, text in from, from Karen. She says, a blind corner does not provide 100 metres clear visibility, so you don't do it. You don't need yellow lines to tell you what the road code covers anyway. I just wonder <laughs> if you want to respond uh, to that. Common sense. Yeah, so that's the common sense approach. Unfortunately, people are not driving with common sense, and so why? And it's a, they drive subliminally. And I've seen people pull out on white dotted lines because it goes white dotted around corners, mm. um, because um, the white dotted line tells them it's okay yeah. to park. Common sense is not being applied. And so as I say, the double yellow line rule, subliminally is a hell of a barrier to overcome. You know, yeah. it's in my mind anyway. Yeah, so the road code, I'm afraid, is out of date and uh, she can you know, quote whatever she likes in that respect, but it's not working, so we need change. Yeah. Uh, Greg, overall, do you think, and looking, there's also a huge controversy at the moment about potholes and the state of maintenance mm -hmm. of our roads. Do you feel safer or more at risk uh, driving a Kiwi road or state highway than you did 5, 10, 15 years ago? Uh, definitely uh, less safe. 100%. The damage that's been done to vehicles um, through the, the poor maintenance and the maintenance contract, the way it's all applied and done has, has changed uh, quite a few years ago now and we're starting to see the real um, negative effect of, of the way the maintenance contracts are laid out uh, because now the, the roads are becoming a lot worse in their condition and the maintenance can't keep up with with those those issues and problems. And so without doubt, you know, these State Highway One, these places that are just you know, it's it's quite laughable 
um, mm. the condition of it, um, and we've got a lot more trucks on the road, more vehicles on the road, and we haven't kept up with with how we look after them, build new roads, and those kinds of things. And it's um, it's become it's become something that I, I'm very concerned we're never actually going to get on top of again. Yeah, Greg, do you ever sit down with Waka Kotahi or tell him if your concerns? Do you ever try and get the air of them? That. I've done that on multiple occasions, and um, I get the same sort of bit of lip service, and um, you know, I get no response or reply um, subsequently after being told that they were keen, they're keen to to actually engage and sit down and listen and 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 um, take on board and work together. Um, and the last meeting I had was uh, just coming up actually twelve months ago, and since then nothing has happened, nothing's changed. So it's it's a, it's it's a similar similar sort of response and unfortunately um, when you've got a department like that with lots of people that are paid a lot of money to make decisions even though they don't they're paid they're a lot of money to tell you they're making a lot of decisions that's <laughs> right and, and and we had you know um again the the road toll last year in 2022 was back to 2018 19 numbers after yeah. two years of covid that um, knocked them way back and they were claiming success through the two covid years on their numbers claiming that road to zero was working when we had restrictions oh, yeah, and yeah. Months yeah, ridiculous. that were down yeah and that which is just ludic- ludicrous so it's not working um, we've got we've got a terrible system and it comes from the start to sean we're not prepared to drive on our roads or not prepared to drive at all well enough right at the beginning and we don't ever get checked or tested from the moment we get our driver's license the habits are bad the distraction is shocking we need to improve uh the ability of of uh, police to actually um you know find and take care of people that and are we need the more double yellow lines on the corners yeah, we do. to stop us yeah, doing do. dumb stuff greg always yep. a real pleasure talking to you um Take it easy. I hope we talk again soon. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Greg Murphy, uh, New Zealand motorsport legend, uh, road safety advocate and writer, and uh, I think that's really simple. Double yellow line just stops me from crossing or trying to pass. That's just, you figure out, I don't pass. And apparently we don't have on blind corners a policy that we put double yellow lines there because we think that if you can't see 100 metres and still white lines, people will exercise common sense. A hell of a lot of people on the road don't have common sense, and those are the ones that cause the problems. Sean, as a professional with very detailed and experience in this area, what Greg Murphy has said about road marking and forward visibility is correct. Thank you. Thank you for that.